is nil. Because if they can't get to Stonehenge, they brought Stonehenge to themselves with this incredible life-size replica. Naturally, they built it out of the hippies' favourite vehicle, the Beetle. And, just so they're not short of spares, they brought a few friends. Come together, right now. And I mean this lot, because the Beetle is back, big time. Slip down to Avon Park Raceway on a summer solstice and you'll find thousands of the creatures gathered for a sort of Woodstock on wheels. 50 years old it may be, and let's not forget a bit of a dog, but the car has found a whole new audience amongst the laid-back kids of the 90s. They've got so much character, and even when things go wrong it doesn't matter because they're lovely. That's some cherries, just having got that sort of chic, have they? <laughs> You could do so much to them, you know, it's so cheap to do them up. They're a cult vehicle, they always have been, so you get sort of an identity by having one and everyone joins a group of enthusiastic owners and travels up together for a wild weekend here. The more crazy ones come to Beetle Bash. Crazy enough to fire up the forklifts, take a pile of old V-dubs and knock them together into the monument that is Dub Henge. There's lots of VW events, it was, but, um, this is the biggest one. It was something that would be of interest to everybody, you know, because these beetles, all of them were donated by beetle enthusiasts, and so it's uh, reclaimed materials, and it's something, you know, rather than scrapping them, it was something nice to do and have an art installation at the convention. There are some beetles, however, which most definitely won't be sacrificed to the automotive druids, because, like any car meet, the Beetle Bash attracts the Show and Shine Brigade. Spend uh, night after night polishing the most ridiculous small part that no one's ever going to see. But you do it because you know that it's there. Um, so yeah, it does get very obsessive. What are you most proud of about yours? What are the main features that have helped it to clean up in the trophies? Uh, the first one is its subtlety. Everything's very, very smooth, clean. Everything's hidden that you can possibly hide. Door handles, all the wires from the engine bay, that kind of thing. Uh, but its main feature is the interior. It's um, an American hot rod style tweed sculptured interior. And uh, it's very concept kind of styling and it's never been done over here. This car, however, remains king of the concourse and winner of the title Most Beautiful VW in Europe. Hardly surprising when you chat to the owner. For a start, the weekend previous to a show, I won't use it. So I then get it in on the Saturday morning we start stripping it down and then we just it takes a week a week of evenings and a Saturday and Sunday I actually have to then clean maybe the sump up the deep sump the gearbox has to the ribs has to be clean and you end up cleaning some of it with a toothbrush the easiest part is actually the body that that takes me half out of polish because there is no no apertures or no protrusions on it so it's very smooth that takes no time at all but it's all the underside that takes the time Oh no, not for me. But I'm not alone there, because the nice thing about the Beetle Bash is that you don't have to be a car nut. You can leave your Haynes manual at the door and just come for a laugh. Blow your hydraulics and, if you want, fall flat on your face. Yeah, go on, go on. <laughs> You're the fire starter. Twisted fire starter. I'm a fire starter. I say, ding dong. You know, if I was at an MG meet, by now I would have been oh, cornered by some beardy old bloke waving his conrod in my face. Oh. But although this looks like Glastonbury has invaded Goodwood, there is some seriously quick metal out there. I suppose we'd better have a look at it, Ooh. if we must. This is what motorsport would have looked like if Adolf had won the war. Because over on the drag strip, the Ravers were fair queuing up to run what they brung. Fast Beetle, I'll believe that when I throw up in it. Let's try this nice beige one. Well, this don't sound like a race car, this sounds pretty feeble. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's about 180, 185 brake horsepower. 
2.2 litre. Your, your stock beetle is 1200 cc's and 34 brake horsepower. Yeah, well that's yeah, those are a nice ones. Keith Beetle was a mere snailiest snail compared to the two American racers imported for the show. The car on the left had 450 horsepower, and I'm afraid it was a case of over here, overpowered, and overturned. While the driver licked his wounds, it was left to Ron Townsend, the American Pro Turbo Drag Champion, to save face for Uncle Sam. 605 horsepower, 150 miles an hour, and... Oh. Oh dear. The crosswinds can affect the cars quite severely, uh, especially at 140 miles an hour. Uh, they're very light at the front end, and it catches them. And unfortunately, we've had two American cars that have been shipped all the way over for this meeting go down um, and luckily they're not injured badly or anything the cars are annihilated but um, they'll rebuild them you've got to take your hat off to these guys thousands of beetles have turned up everyone sorted for ease and turtle wax and they're celebrating solstice just how they like it but you know I can't help feeling a bit sorry for them because the real Stonehenge is full of magic and wizardry, whereas this, whichever way you cut it, is still just a bunch of dead German cars. Yeah, well, there you go. Just completely different. We went to the Czech Republic for their historic.